you know, I'm just saying. Absolutely not. No. I, I mean, I, I, sh- mean I, I should, right? You're, we're doing our own show. We're, we're listening to the sound of our own voices. I mean, exactly. I should. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know. Skate, I skate, mean, skate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't help it. Really, <laughs> right. I pretty much always have a partial, though. Yeah, it, it, like, it really never ends. Yeah, wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, partial. You know, it's right. like it's yeah. You know, get in the shower, see your reflection in the in the shower, partial. You know, absolutely. Yeah. So you know, but uh, that's I feel that's normal though. I feel I feel that's, I, that's how healthy. things should be. It, it it seems healthy to me. It's all cleaning out the old belfry. You know what I mean? Like you gotta <laughs> you gotta keep it fresh. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. You know. <laughs> All right, welcome everybody to the Lazy Geeks Podcast, our weekly podcast that discusses top geek news from the world of entertainment, gaming, science, comics, technology, or stuff that's just fucking cool. This is for the week of July 27th, 2018. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. All right. So, um, uh, yeah, we pretty much don't have anything for the the random round table. I mean, for the uh, opening this week, because I think everything is pretty much no big changes or anything like that. So I guess on that note, we just jump right into the uh, random roundtable. Hey. Uh, uh, what? 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 <laughs> <Chicka cha. laughs> um, get messy with it. <laughs> <laughs> get jiggy with it. No, 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 no. Uh, I don't know. What, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's like suddenly we were doing the show, and then suddenly I don't know what happened. Things things just got out of control. <laughs> things got weird. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, one thing I wanted to kind of touch on this week, I actually went and saw uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. Um, the reviews have actually been really good on it. A lot of people talking about being um, a really solid uh, Marvel movie. Uh, even becoming some people's new favorite. Uh, mm. I really kind of, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think this 2018 is probably the strongest year for Marvel because you had Black Panther and then you had obviously Infinity War. And then Ant-Man and the Wasp was on a smaller scale, which was cool. And it told a more, a smaller story. And I, I which I thought was actually kind of nice because it didn't have to be, be and you kind of can't, I don't know. To me, Ant Man doesn't seem like a movie you can make. A, it, it can be huge, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, no pun intended. <laughs> right. But I mean, it, it's. I don't. I don't really. And it's something you can't really explain. But yeah. it, it, he always, and even back in the day, just seemed like a a B character that you really liked. But then, let again, yet again, Iron Man was never right that but, popular too. So yeah. it's it's weird. Yeah, um, I really thought uh, the movie kind of fleshed more of the characters out. Um, you know, we pick up at two years after um, the events of Civil War. So, you know, Scott uh, uh, Scott is under house arrest as part of his deal with the German government and Homeland Security. He can't leave his house. So when his daughter's over, he has to you know, make things, uh, you know, be creative because they can't go anywhere. Right. Um, and it's a little more of a supportive, uh, type of, uh, type of movie. Cause like his ex-wife and, and the cop, you know, her cop boyfriend or husband or whatever, you know, he's, you know, like totally backs Scott with everything and, you know, likes that he's turning over a new leaf and stuff like that. So it's, it's actually really good. You see the repercussions of everything that happened with Hank Pym and, um, and Jane or Janet. And so, you know, it, 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 to me, it just seemed to kind of really flow along that same thread. It didn't have any cameos from any other, you know, character, which I thought was nice. Um, it really kind of let it flow on its own in its own kind of environment. The only, the only thing was that was funny was, um, when, uh, when, uh, they took Scott to go see Hank, he's sitting there and, um, and uh, Jane, she looks at, at Scott and she's like, and um, she's like, so you just had to do it, right? So apparently we find out that Scott took the suit without Hank's permission and mm-hmm. left. And uh, he's basically, she's like, and he's like, look, he goes, you know, Cap needed me. And then she looks at him and goes, Cap? And then he goes, well, Cap, 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 C
Captain America. He's like, you know, his, his friends call him Cap. Well, I'm not really his friend, you know, I just kind of, uh. you know, we're just, but we call, oh, it's just, you know, I just, it's for short. I just call him Cap for short, okay, you know? So he goes to that old bit. But um, it was cool because even the ghost is a great villain. Um, the, the effects they used on her, the phasing effects and all that were great. The cool thing about it, though, like the villains we have been seeing this year, not, I thought it was a more fleshed out villain. It's a villain only because the circumstances. That's what makes right. him a villain. And that I think we're actually seeing more in the Marvel Universe, which I think is kind of repairing the damage, you know, that the, the two note villains that they had. So these are villains that aren't just villains for vi- being vi- for villain's sake. You know? For the sake of being villains, yeah. yeah. So I thought it was a, I thought it was really good. Um, the mid credit sequence ties in to Infinity War. If you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil it. Um, but it ties in perfectly, and you're kind of like, oh, that's why, <laughs> you know, that's that's why. So that should be really interesting when we come back to Avengers Four. Um, but it really felt like those like a, it felt like a comic book. Because you get the whole story, which is supposed to happen just before that, and then at the end you get that little tag that ties in to like the bigger, you know, like the bigger, you know, event series that's going on. So it's actually really kind of cool. I, I definitely enjoyed that. So I thought it was a lot of fun, and um, and uh, yeah, I, I, if you like if you like the original Ant Man, you're you'll like this one. It, um, Michael Pena has another moment where he tells a story, which is great. Uh, it's just it's so fucking funny. But uh, but yeah, a lot of characters got a lot of extra play time, so they got to kind of flesh them out a little bit more. But yeah, so uh, yeah, definitely check it out. If you guys haven't seen it yet, definitely check it out. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about it um, from Steve, and I'm and I'll swear, you know, <laughs> wasn't wasn't just Steve, but uh, yeah, I've. If you haven't seen it, definitely go see it. If this is your kind of thing, you know right. what I mean. Um, now, <laughs> something that. I'm actually kind of surprised at the um, the tone choice for the next trailer that we that we um, or the first trailer that we saw. Just so Uh, you know, these are basically trailers that came out at Comic Con. Yeah. So and the Shazam trailer (laughs) is hilarious. Um, I like it because it's definitely it feels like for you know not sound like an asshole but it feels like that marvel tone like it's it's yeah. light you know and, and that's how most people need to digest their stories so i think that it's going to do well it looks funny um the suit is literally lifted from the comic book oh my god that suit is like almost pitch perfect um they picked the perfect dude oh god yeah to be that to be that ridiculous um and he's not really ridiculous. I, you see, the thing is, is that, and I was talking to my friend about this, Shazam has never been that serious of a character. And that's one of the things that I'm, I'm very curious because you're going to hear people saying that it's going to lift from the Marvel tone. They're going to talk. They're going to compare it to Marvel because of just the, the tenor of the movie. But the thing is, it's like, yeah, but if you knew Shazam, it has to be that way. Yeah, and also, if, if, if a DC executive took a shit, they'd fucking compare it to how a Marvel executive took a shit. Well, like Kevin Feige usually kind right. of... Right. It, it's this constant back and forth. <laughs> it, it's tedious. Um, the He's never been a serious character because while he looks like a grown man, he's like a 15-year-old boy. Right. You know, so he does have a bit of silliness to him. I remember the latest uh, animated Justice League. Wonder Woman had to check him. Oh, right. He was, he was too busy trying to showboat and... He was a teenager. He was being silly, you know, and none of them knew that, you know. So um, I think Wonder Woman punched him in the mouth, hmm. uh, get his act together, and then he was he, he got that he got that uh, half chub, right? You know, um, but really good looking. I, I I love I love the way the movie is. I'm going to be excited. I'll see that one in the theater for sure. We're gonna intro the next one, dude. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, real quick on on Shazam. Uh, it looks fucking hilarious. Um, I I definitely like the the little moment when they walk out of the uh the convenience store and that chick's walking by and say, "Hey, I'm a superhero." You know, hey, what's up, I'm superhero? <laughs> superhero right, you know? It's like that's what a kid would say, you know, to show off and stuff like that. So it looks really cool. It looks really funny. I thought they just got it. They got a great Shazam for it. Right. And um, uh, it, Shaz- it, 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 Shazam! Oh, that one scene where he's walking. 
I think it was like a like a amusement uh, like not like, yeah and he like just goes parent. shazam yeah. to instant change yeah that was just, dope. when he's walking he's all shazam the bam you're just like oh shit I was oh, I, it's like oh, is that what we do with yeah, <laughs> exactly I was like oh okay that's how this is that's how it's gonna play you know so funny though. <laughs> but uh, definitely check it out by the way the links for all of these um, are linked to the YouTube uh, their YouTube channel so you can go ahead and check out the trailers on all of these in case you missed it um, if you and if you missed it. Um, you're doing life wrong. Yeah, and, uh, you're fucking up. Yeah, you know, and so. we'd appreciate it if you could fucking <laughs> cut it out. We'd appreciate it if you get on our level. Is really what right. we're trying to say. We'd appreciate it if you stop being a piece of shit. <laughs> okay, it's a waste of space. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm obviously being dramatic, <laughs> right? But, but seriously, but, yeah. <laughs> being dramatic, but still, we're being serious. You know. <laughs> Being dramatically truthful. Right, exactly. Right <laughs> okay. All right, so the next trailer is for something we've all been wanting, to, uh, been waiting for. Um, Aquaman. Yeah. Uh, it's been in. It's been done for a while. Uh, they finished, I think, filming early this year, maybe even late last year. Um, and uh, it was it. It looks pretty awesome. Um, the first shot of where, you know, he pops in to that ship, knocks that guy out, then looks back at the two guys and is like, permission to come aboard. And those guys look at each yeah. other like, what the fuck? I, hey, man, you can do whatever you need. <laughs> um, I thought the, uh, I thought it's going to have that, it's going to seems like it has that same balance that Justice League had, a seriousness and a little, um, uh, a little humor in there. Right. Um, so uh someone said it was um because you know we compare to marvel because right. we have to it was uh black panther in the ocean but killmonger's the hero right <laughs> <laughs> which kind of makes sense when you don't understand the story right. like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um uh, i really like black mantis yeah fucking look, look legit i yeah. mean you know um i you know, oh God, Mira. Oh. Mm. 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 That, that, that's really oh. all I gotta say. Um, Good Lord. <laughs> thank, thank the Lord. Right. <laughs> um, and and yeah, so it's like, you know, the 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 opening scene you see obviously as a kid, you, we're gonna get his origin story, which is cool. We you know we all kind of expected that to happen, you know. Um. I uh, I really really liked where they're like, oh look, Arthur's talking to fishes, you know, and uh, oh, and they all they start hitting the fucking glass. Yeah, and he says, stop it, stop it, and then all of a sudden the the sharks and the fish kind of come at them and stare them down. I think that was perfect too because what people t- let me first of all, let me explain something about Aquaman's powers. Okay, <laughs> he doesn't talk to fish. He they explained it in the in the recent comic. And Aquaman himself was like, fish aren't intelligent enough for me to hold a conversation with. Right. He goes, but he can psychically get them to do things. Like, he, he does that. So, in that, I think that scene is perfect. And, of course, I'm reading more into it because this is what I do. Um, <laughs> th- he was a kid, and he's just upset. So, he's, th- he's psychically projecting that. And all the fish in the tank are like, uh, that's, that, that's the homie. Right. Like, What's up? That scene was dope. That was the best scene in the trailer. 100%. Yeah. I was so excited about that. Um, ready? Yeah, you know, and it, well, they kind of tr- well, like they brought it up in Justice League when Batman goes, "So, do you like talk to fish?" <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> he's like, but he never really answered. So that was kind of cool because it kind of left it for you know everybody else to figure it out, you know. And um, but uh, but yeah, I I totally dug it. Like I I was I'm really um, uh, I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, it looks it looks good. It looks good. Um, yeah, I just uh, and it's it's Jason Momoa. Actually, it's Aquaman playing Jason Momoa right. playing Aquaman. So Jason Momoa doesn't exist. Yeah, right. There is no Jason Momoa. It's Aquaman. Mm-hmm. Now <laughs> this next trailer kind of blew me away, just by the sheer <laughs> balls it took for them to make this movie. So they're making a new Godzilla movie now. Now initially you're like, okay, 
you know, whatever. Right. It's a dude from it's a dude from Paris Bueller's Day Off gonna be in it again. <laughs> you know, you just you just sit there and make jokes. They're going all fucking out. I saw all the monsters in this motherfucking movie, yeah. dude. In in the trailer. <laughs> and it's called King of, it's called Godzilla King of Monsters. Right. They give you the whole in the beginning, they they no bullshit, no secrets. This is what's happening. Apocalyptic event. They need to find these titans that are locked locked up. And obviously the titans are the monsters from Godzilla. Mothra was huge. Oh, fuck yeah, I was dude. like, holy fuck. Um, and you saw it kind of in a cloud or whatever. But seriously, if I saw that, I'd piss myself. Right. Um, Godzilla looked dope as shit. Um, there's a few other ones, and I'm not too into Godzilla. I can't really remember um, the names. Did you see the, the first of- one? Did you see the, the, the one that came out a couple years ago? No, the only Godzilla movie I've ever seen is the one with Ferris Bueller in it. <laughs> uh, no, the one that came out a couple uh, a couple years ago with Brian Cranston and um, uh, Scarlet Witch and um, Quicksilver. Mm, they, uh, yeah, it was actually that was actually really good. I was mm. I was really impressed with it because it was classic Godzilla. It was classic. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I saw I saw it too. You got eleven from fucking um, from uh, Stranger Things, and uh, he is so. Uh, and then you have the dude from Friday Night Lights. <laughs> yeah, this is, this, is, this is a very weird ensemble of people in that movie. <laughs> but um, I really, I it, it looks good. It, it looks like it's going to be a visual feast. Like oh, this yeah. is something you definitely want to catch the IMAX one on. Yeah. You know, and just really enjoy it because it's who doesn't like watching giant monsters fight things? Right. I know I do. <laughs> I, I I don't care how old I get. Mm-hmm. I want to see big monsters beat up other big monsters. <laughs> I used to I watched Power Rangers for a reason. <laughs> right, exactly. It wasn't it, it half of it was the Pink Ranger. <laughs> and you know what? The Yellow Ranger too, who I think is underrated and people don't bring up enough. <laughs> right. She was cute. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Um Oh my god, oh, yeah. this dude. So this one I actually didn't realize had come out until last night when I was looking at stuff for the show notes. I happened. I to didn't see realize it. till today. Yeah, and I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> um, uh, we got a trailer for Star Trek Discovery season two, mm-hmm. um, and it's fucking awesome. It looks lighter in tone. It definitely looks like they're they're not going as dark and heavy as they did season one. Um, which I think is a good balance. I was of, fine with that, though. Like, I, I don't know. People were freaking out about the tone of it. And I'm like, I'm cool with it being serious. Yeah, but I think, you know, it might be it might be a better balance of being, you know, serious with comedy, you know, or yeah. light moments. Because, you know, sometimes if it's if it's too intense all the way through, it kind of becomes boring. It becomes too heavy. Like, yeah. I understand what you're saying. And you, and you get kind of tired watching it. That was what was happening with me with, um, you know, and I'm sitting here arguing that point, and I completely agree with you now that I think about it. it I, that happened Jessica with me with Jones. Game <laughs> um, A little bit with Jessica Jones, yeah. but with um, Game of Thrones. Oh, right. I got to, like, the end of the third season, and I just I couldn't physically watch it anymore. Like, it was just too much. Mm-hmm. Like, every time I turned it on, I was like, who's going to die and who's going to fuck? <laughs> like right. just the, every time I turn around, someone's dying. You know, I was like, all right, whatever. But um, you know, call me a bitch, whatever. But you know, we find I was really um surprised with um, uh, the new captain. Oh my god! If you squint, it's the dude from the movies. <laughs> right. The mannerisms, everything. He just looks and I mean, so fucking cool. This it's two a, different. This, it's two different actors mimicking the one dude, though, right? right? Yeah. So and the, the thing is, though, is that when you look, when you, when you, he does look cool as fuck. It's the same guy that played. I can't remember his character from the Inhumans. Um, and he had no. Oh, he played the king. The king, yeah, in Inhumans, and he's playing Christopher Pike, and oh my god, I w- I looked at him so, and I was like, dude, he fucking looks smooth. Like the looks he had, and the way he sat in the chair, and I was like, going, I was like, uh, no homo, but you know, it, <laughs> it, it was it was just like that, like that awesome of a trailer for it, you know. Um, and then they, you know, just the little the little banter they had back and forth, and what what did um, Tilly say, like, yay math or something like that, you know? Um, oh yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, and then there's that little tag at the end in the turbo lift. 
um, where you kind of like, okay, I see where they're going with that. They're making it a little lighter. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, I don't know. I was, I was really excited for it. You know, the, the, the point of like the station is going to get blown up by, it's going to be hit by a, a pulsar. Oh, thank God. I thought you said we we're all going to die. You know, right. you're like, <laughs> you're like, wait, what? You're in Starfleet? Wait, wait. <laughs> I think that's what he said, though. <laughs> exactly. I'm not sure, but I think that's what was said. So, you know. <laughs> I'm going to need you to calm the fuck down. <laughs> uh, but season two looks looks pretty fucking intense. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely interested in seeing how this plays out. Yeah, it looks really good. Um, and it early 2019. I'm so excited for it. You know what? Discovery got off on a rocky start. I think I think a lot of us didn't know how to how to process it. But you got to kind of give them credit at this point now where they they had a new way of doing it and they said, "You know what? We're just going to hit it." And and I we know that a lot of people are going to get fucking whiny about it, but most of the the fans are going to settle in <laughs> and be cool with it. I think that's what happened. You know, and um I love that show. Like, it, it tore, I think it was towards. It was the midpoint. Once the it, midpoint. Yeah. You and me were like, bro, you see that last fucking discovery? Like, exactly. it was one of those shows, and it's been so long since I've been able to watch a show like that. Okay. Where I'm like, I'm like, fuck, like the next one needs to come out. Like, I'm freaking out about it. You know. So uh, it was, it was tight. It was cool, man. So we'll see. Um. So the trailer for Glass came out. And this movie looks fucking crazy. Um, <laughs> if you so wanted a team up between uh, Unbreakable and um, what was the other movie? Uh, Switch? No. No, that's Nintendo. Um, <laughs> Slice. Slice. So that's the funny thing is I didn't even know the Slice thing was in the same universe as Unbreakable. Although it makes sense if, if um, Shyamalan fucking directed it because I think all of his movies are in the same universe. Probably, yeah. Um, but it's this interesting concept where Bruce Willis, Samuel L. Jackson, and I can't remember his name, but the dude from Slice and James McAvoy. Professor right, X. Right. Thank you. Professor I know. X. I just don't know. I can't remember his name. He's <laughs> Professor X to me. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, are are in a like a insane asylum because this doctor and she's talking about it kind of like monologuing in the beginning about how she's in this growing field of people who believe they're superheroes Super heroes, yeah. or have super abilities <laughs> and the funny thing is those three do <laughs> so it's it's this weird it's this weird thing where you you're the person behind the curtain you know the truth and it's almost like we're going to watch this woman realize it I'm I'm super stoked for this movie. It, it looks like some next level shit. You know, it'd be fucking hilarious if, like, at some point you see fucking McAvoy take the um, uh, take Cerebro and put the thing on his head. You know, like. <laughs> right. And I didn't even know. I didn't even know the dude from Slice had had powers. I thought he just had multiple personalities. A bunch. I never saw Slice. Yeah, I never. I haven't. Seen, I know. I, I, for those of you out there, before you go ahead and criticize, I have yet to see Unbreakable and Slice. So. Now I've that this is Unbreak coming out, I'm going to see them both. I've seen Unbreakable multiple times, but I'd love that movie. It's, it's probably probably my favorite Shyamalan film. Because it's, it's a great movie. Shyamalan Ding Dong? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that one and uh, the Alien one I dug, too. Oh, Signs. I just liked it. Um, where, and, of course, where you're I see where, Dead. Yeah, oh, of course. Yeah. You know, but it's like, yeah, you know, we hate water, but we come to a planet that's two-thirds of it. Right, <laughs> because we're stupid as shit. Right, exactly. You know, we're I an like advanced it. species, but we're not that bright. We're, like they're, they're a Trump society that made right. space travel. That's really it's real it dumb. Yeah, right. it's, it's super <laughs> dumb. Um, it looks. It lo just looks interesting. It looks like something. It's one of those movies that they, they come out and it it doesn't follow a formula that already exists for mm -hmm. filmmaking. It, it's something that I didn't. I would never have expected to come out. And it's completely got me like, what? Like, I don't even know what it's going to be. You know, it just weirds me out. <laughs> and um, I like that because lately, let's be real. You know, we pretty much know what's going to happen right. for the most part the in most, most part. movies that come out. Right. You know, so. Except for Marvel. Marvel's been, the last couple movies, been throwing me for a loop. I'm going to be real. Especially with Infinity War. Infinity War. Yeah, little turn, little twists and turns. I gotta give credit where credit's due. <laughs> but like the horror, the horror scene, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. 
very very cut cut and dry you know oh, yeah. you, you know what's gonna happen um and that's, that's it, it. For the that's, round table. yeah that's it for all of that so uh yeah so yeah like we said all of those stories are available all the i mean all the stories all the uh trailers for all of those are in the show notes uh if you're uh, this is one thing I kept wanting to bring up. If your app doesn't show the links in there, because we embed the links into the the titles instead of like just having them separate, and some some apps or some uh, podcast readers don't make them clickable, just go right. to the website. Go to thelazygeeks.com and then go to the podcast for two two hundred and seven, and the links will be there. You know, so have it all there for you. All right, so on that note, it is time to jump to the headlines. Yeah! (laughs) (laughs) So, Disney has fired writer-director James Gunn from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 after a right-wing media personality resurfaced a series of offensive tweets Gunn made, in many cases from 2009 and 2010. Quote, the offensive attitudes and statements disclosed by James's Twitter feed are indefensible and inconsistent with our studio's values. In quotes, uh, Walt Disney Studios chairman Alan Horn said in a statement to The Hollywood Reporter, quote, and we have severed our business relationship with him, end quote. As noted by Polygon, conspiracy theorist Michael Chern- um, Cernovich, perhaps best known as one of the most active promoters of the fake Pizzagate conspiracy theory mm. began resurfacing some of Gunn's old tweets going back nearly a decade. In the tweets, Gunn makes a number of jokes about pedophilia and molestation. In Pizzagate, right-wing media personality like uh, Cernovich pushed the idea that Hillary Clinton and other members of the Democratic leadership were running a child molestation ring out in a pizzeria in Washington, D.C. They promoted the absurd uh, absurd theory so fiercely that eventually a man who b- who bought into Cernovich's uh, rhetoric opened fire in a restaurant with an assault rifle. Uh, Cernovich also has a history of using old Twitter posts to target outspoken progressive voices. In 2017, he launched a smear campaign against uh, MSNBC contributor Sam Cedar over a sarcastic tweet Cedar had posted regarding Roman Polanski back in 2009. MSNBC initially responded by cutting ties with Cedar, though two days later it reversed course. Gunn, it should be noted, has been a vocal critic of President Donald Trump and the GOP in general, making him a ripe target for someone like Cernovich in an attempt to silence. While Gunn's jokes are by no means appropriate, nor the kind of thing that a family-friendly Disney would want to be associated with, Cernovich's assertion that they prove Gunn is himself part of a pale pedophilia ring just seems a bit absurd as the Pizzagate accusation. Anyone who follows Gunn's career knows that the filmmaker started in the world of low-budget exploitation cinema, writing schlocky movies like um, like Troma and Juliet, before eventually climbing his way into the Hollywood studio system where he wrote uh, films like Scooby-Doo before breaking into the Marvel Cinematic Universe with the two Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Offensive, shocking humor was one of the filmmaker's early trademarks in his career something he acknowledged in an apology posted on Twitter on July 19th. Uh, This isn't the first time that the filmmaker's sense of humor has led to outrage and concern. A 2011 blog post, 50 Superheroes You Most Want to Have Sex With, received um, received harsh criticism for being both homophobic and sexist. The director has also taken a... had also taken to task by fans in 2015 for a moment in the original Guardians of the Galaxy uh, when which... Zaldan, um, Zoe Zaldana's Gamora was referred to as a green whore, um, but to be to be on that offense, see the, the problem that I have with things like that is that it's taken out of context in which the character and scene. It's like that whole thing where um, remember in the original Avengers movie where adopted people got pissed off because Joss Whedon said that Loki was adopted, so that's why he killed all those people. It's just. <sighs> people get offended for everything. Well, yeah. Like I actually, I it's kind of like what I told my kid the other day because I I, call, I said they had a big hit. You got a fat hit. You get this shit checked out. <laughs> I was joking around, <laughs> and it says, you know, that's offensive. And I'm like, it's up to you if you want to be offended. It has nothing to do with me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> it's like that's your choice. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's ridiculous. Come on. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like. It's one of those things where it's not like because people will sit there and say like, well, yeah, but Harvey Weinstein and stuff like that. It's like one that's not that level. 
to, it was done by a a a blogger who obviously has a vendetta. And if you look at their past, it should be one where it's kind of like, yeah, but it's not necessarily, you know, a source that we're going to respect, <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, I'm just, I was, I was very pissed off. I'm not pleased with Disney for that. I think they over, they, they knee jerk reacted too fast. But then you made a good point, And this was before we started recording right. is they fired Roseanne so fast that it's almost like they had to, they yeah. had to do it yeah. because you know, Roseanne's camp and I'm just saying Roseanne, the lawyers, all that would have chirped up real quick if they didn't fire a gun. And honestly, if I was Disney, I'm like, well, a gun makes more money. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> I'd be real. You know, but it is some bullshit, you know, because especially with the Roseanne situation, because a lot of people are trying to use that. Well, you know, they fired Roseanne. They got to fire him. Yeah. But Roseanne said that like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. She said you know it like, the mean? Day, like, like the day she was fired. She said it the day before. Right. And, you know, this is it's like this is 10 years ago. But, you know, there's other people out there that. Well, Selma, um, Selma Blair, yeah. uh, actress. Uh, the only thing I remember her from um, dang- not dangerous. Minds, cruel intentions. Mm. She was the innocent that. uh right. Buffy was fucking with. Um, she came out and uh, with a couple of tweets saying that, um, you know, and she made a good point. So this was 10 years ago. If we can't accept that people can grow and change and become better people, then what's the point? Yeah, and she's a big proponent of the Me Too movement and all that. Right. So, you know, so it's it's like that's the thing. It's like if I say something 20 years ago, are you going to fucking drag me through the mud? Like, give me a break. Yeah. You know what I mean? Come on. Yeah, and that's the thing is it's like uh, – you know, you have people that uh, say things, you know, and it would be different. Like if they were coming up and saying, Roseanne said this like 10 years ago, it would be like, yeah, but that was 10 years ago, you know, and you have it now where it's like, well, she said this yesterday. OK, so obviously they believe that. But, you know, he hasn't said anything in, in the, you know, in the last like 10 years that would, you know, especially when you're a director like that, you're going to, you know, you're trying to get. You know, back in the day, like 10 years ago, you had to say shocking things on Twitter or things that would get that to get fucking people to follow you and shit. Yeah. You know, so I don't know what that's all about. It's just foolishness. And I hope that um, I hope that James Gunn's name doesn't get dragged through the mud. I think he's been he's been remaining kind of quiet. He's been really um, lawyers are probably telling him to remain quiet. But it's like, um, you know, Hardwick has been disappeared. Even his podcast doesn't come out. So. Hardwick too, like I and his own wife was trying to back him up, yeah. and and I'm like, you know, it's a like, lot of people came out and backed him up, and I'm just like, when if like even why, like we can't assume that maybe she's a bitter girlfriend who got caught cheating and now figures, oh hey, now's my time. Exactly, we we kind of live in in a world like yes, if 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 a man is doing something inappropriate, he should be called out on it. 100, percent I agree with that, but. We live in this society now where women do no wrong and women can never lie. And they're these precious angels and men are these vicious fucking monsters hmm. that are just out to get them all the time. And that's not true. Right. I've met some pretty fucked up women. Oh, God, yeah. You know, that, that will, that and there will, will fucking be, there ruin will, you. There will be women that will tell you, oh, God, warm, women are worse than men. Yeah. Yeah, there, there'll be women. There, like, yeah. There have been they can be a little bit more vindictive. I think it's because women are better at communication. <laughs> well, <laughs> so yeah. They get everybody to know, but, um, you know, I'm not going to go down that path, but I'm just <laughs> saying it takes two to tango. It's, it's not, it's not always the dude's fault. It, they can't be the default, right? There needs to be an investigation. Like with the hardwick stuff, we don't even know if it's true or not. And he's completely, they've taken him off of shit. Right. Like he used to do that, um, that show after the walking dead, he's off of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's like guys, like we don't even know if it's true or not. Right. You know, like calm down. You know, I do process uh, versus popular opinion. We well, all know. Who well, is. yeah. I mean, everybody's always like, you know, oh yeah, you know, we need to, um, we need to, what do you call it? Uh, um, have, uh, yeah, due process and justice, and you know, innocent until proven guilty, but not when public opinion is against you, no matter what. Right. Yeah. Well, let's move on to something lighter and more fun. Um, remember when the PS3 shipped with the Spider-Man front front running across the Spider-Man font running across its belly right. in an awkward mix of corporate synergy? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yes, I do remember that, and it was shit. <laughs> um, Twelve years later, which is now, uh, and Sony's having another go at smashing its flagship console and and its beloved web slinger together in a in a way that makes more sense. You know what's funny is for the longest time I'm sitting there like, why is the Spider-Man game exclusive to the PlayStation? It doesn't make any sense. And then it did because Sony owns the rights <laughs> to Spider-Man. It, it did not dawn on me. <laughs> it took you this like, long to like, figure it out? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so clever. I didn't know they had game rights, though. Oh, That's prob- kind of slick. They probably have shared rights, I bet. Yeah. Anyway. Um, doesn't matter because I'm getting that PS4 Pro. So it's whatever. You know. <laughs> um at Comic-Con, the company announced a limited edition PS4 Pro bundle that paints the console in Spider-Man red with the spider logo on its on its case. The gorgeous pop art design uh, carries over to the bundled DualShock 4 controller, which has a similar red and white color scheme. At the same time, Sony has pushed out another trailer for the aforementioned game, uh, which is due to launch on September 7th. Can't wait for that. The story trailer uh, gives us our first look at Silver Sable, a reimagined character from the comics, uh, as well as a team up between Peter, MJ, and Miles Morales. Um, the Spider-Man PS4 Pro bundle arrives on September 7th, setting you back $400 in the U.S. and $500 in Canada. Pre-ordered now. Pre-orders are available now. Um, oh wait, wait, wait! And you'll also get bonuses like various skins for Spidey to wear, including the v- Velocity suit and the Iron Spider suit seen in Infinity War. Yeah. Thick. Um, <laughs> here's the thing, I'm I'm actually about to buy a PS4 Pro like pretty soon, like within a month or a month and a half. And I was like, should I get this fucking Spider-Man one? Like, it is painfully red, and it's also super glossy. Yeah, I so probably, it really pops out. I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't either, cause it, cause you know why. The thing with special like glossy, consoles, you don't like. I don't like though. glossy stuff. I, I like things to be very. Um, what's the word? Not subtle, but understated. Right. Like so, it, you can't. You don't really notice it until you notice it. Um, the control is hot. I'm. I'm agree with that. Uh, it's red with white buttons, and then the X square uh, triangle and and circle is in red. Uh, it looks real nice. Although the touchpad's black, they never really change the touchpad yeah. color. Um, but okay. Um, it's a beautiful console. It, it really is. The Spider-Man logo is big. Like the PlayStation logo is up in the right corner. Obviously, this console is designed to stand up. Um, and that Spider-Man console is running vertically from almost end to end. And it, it's it really does look impressive. And if you're a huge Spider-Man fan or just a fan of Red, um, <laughs> this is definitely a buy. I mean, you're not you don't have to spend any extra money. And you get a little bonuses and stuff and. Stuff I mean that we'll get later, but <laughs> we all know. But um, yeah, this is a cool little console. Something that Sony likes to do too. We we all know Sony makes specialty consoles. They had a couple of uh, um, they had a couple of different PS3s or a couple of different games that got a war fucking PS3. I don't know if anybody saw that one. Oh yeah, I saw that, that one. Was slick. Yeah. So you know, it is what it is. It is what it is, and it is when it isn't. You know. Oh. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Now, here's something that is going to be interesting for a lot of people. The EU's decision to force Google to unbundle its Chrome and search apps from Android may have some implications for the future of Android's free business model. In a blog post defending Google's decision to bundle search and Chrome apps on Android, Google CEO or uh, CEO 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 or <laughs> CEO or <laughs> yeah <laughs> CEO Sundar uh, Pichai outlines the company's response to the EU's $5 billion fine. Pichai highlights the fact that typical Android users will, quote, install around 50 apps themselves, end quote, and can easily remove pre-installed apps, depending on the device you have. If you get it from Verizon, you can't uninstall a lot of those pre-installed apps unless you jailbreak the fucker, but, right. you know. Uh, but if Google is prevented from bundling its own apps, it will upset the Android ecosystem. Quote, if phone makers and mobile network operators couldn't include our apps in a wired range of devices, it would upset the balance of the Android ecosystem, explains uh, Pichai, or P- yeah, Pichai, uh, carefully avoiding the fact that the phone makers will no longer be forced to bundle these apps. It can still choose to do so. Pichai 
then hints that the free Android business model has relied on the app bundling. Quote, so far, the Android business model has meant to that we haven't had to change or charge phone makers for our technology and depend on tightly controlled distribution models, says Pachai. But we are concerned that today's decision will upset the careful balance that we have struck with Android and that it sends a troubling signal in favor of proprietary systems over open platforms. Pachai's subtle talk about of a quote-unquote careful balance of the Android business model has been seen as a warning shot to consumers, phone makers, and the European Commission. The EU has made no suggestions on exactly how Google should solve its app bundling violations, but it's clear that if phone makers can bundle their own browsers instead of Chrome and the f and point search queries towards rivals, then it could have implications on the ri the mobile ad revenue, which consists of more than 50% of the company's net digital ad revenue. Google is warning that if Android business model could now change and that they may mean that the company needs to consider licensing Android to filmmakers, uh, phone makers. It's an unlikely scenario that relies on consumers not seeking out Chrome or Google search on Android after Google's bundle unbundling. If go given Google's dominance in search and browsers and the popularity of many of its services, Pichai's warning looks more like a bluff to court popular opinion than a genuine threat that Android will no longer be free. Um, they're going to have to be careful with that, though, yeah. because Android is based on a free operating system and free code and now they can do it they're they're so the thing is you, you, it reminds me of red hat so red hat is a is a a corporate version of linux um and they do charge but the thing is they don't charge for red hat specifically they charge for their service hmm. like they charge for you can call them for help and stuff like that right. um it's a very touchy thing with the with the gpl and the and the the um the uh the free software there was a whole thing about it back in the day and it, and they they really made this this big agreement that it's going to be free um now if anyone could figure out a way around that it would probably be google um but i think it would be kind of a shitty thing i mean the one of the one of the things that android is is cool with is that it's more it's much more open than and than apple we get to choose what we want to do mm -hmm. you know and and um I don't know. We'll we'll see how that pans out, but uh, I I do I it does kind of feel like a bluff to be honest. Yeah, it does feel a lot like a bluff. Like you know, they're saying this just because they're looking to, um, you know, possibly, uh, you know, trying to get people to say, hey, you know, stop this. Let's overturn that. Let's get that out of there. Um, but you know, at the same time, it's like they could unbungle, but you know, a lot of people are gonna go, oh well, let me get that. You know, let me get that, uh, you know, Google Assistant, you know, or, you know, YouTube and all that other stuff, you know. Uh, Chrome, not a great browser on mobile, so I don't use it anyway. Yeah. You know, but like on my phone. I mean, it works, but the amount of fucking ads, ads and pop-ups yeah. is oh ridiculous. God, yeah. So, but, yeah. Yeah, I, I immediately get rid of Chrome. I mean, I disable it. Right. You know, you can't, you can't really... Uh, uninstall it but if they allowed you to like on even network because that's the big problem that i i could see is that if they go okay we'll let you put it on there but people should be able to delete chrome off an android they yeah you know they can't like oh well it's just it's to say you have to disable you have to take that extra step you know you sh you should be able to use you know you should be able to uninstall it but the same thing goes with um apple apple's the worst at it you know, but there we should all all phone manufacturers should be able to delete stock apps. I think the, I think the phone manufacturer, short lived that really figured that problem out was Microsoft. You could delete everything, except for essential things like phone, like the one that dialed. Right. <laughs> you could it wouldn't let you uninstall that, but you could you it would preload with some stuff. Microsoft forced um, Verizon, all them, that all their stuff could had to be able to be deleted. Right. So I would immediately, if I refresh my phone, I would delete like half the shit on there. Hmm. You know, and and I and I don't know how Microsoft pulled that off, hmm. but the, it was it was one of the greatest fucking things ever on hmm. the Microsoft phone um, platform that I miss and wish that uh, it worked out. But whatever, <laughs> I digress. Um, Buckle up 
fans of Joss Whedon and badass teenage vampire killers, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is getting a reboot. THR reports that 20th Century Fox Television has had a reboot in mind for a while now, but talks about actually putting one in motion beginning in the fall of 2017. Now that the studio has hired a writer for the show, things are really starting to look up. Whedon has expressed apprehension about making a Buffy reboot in the past, saying, Luckily, most of my actors still look wonderful, but I'm not worried about them being creaky. I'm more worried about me being creaky as a storyteller. You don't want that feeling that you should have left before the encore. But with a new writer hired and the show on the way, he appears to have, have gotten over his early earlier qualms. Whedon will be executive producing this time around, and Monica um, Awushu Breen, uh, who worked with Whedon on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., has been hired to write and produce the series, as well as serve as its showrunner. She is credited as the writer and showrunner for a slew of other titles, including Midnight Texas. I don't know what those are. Um, no official script has been ordered, and the show has yet to find a director or an actor to play Buffy, so things are still in early stages. The tone of the show was vaguely described by producers who said, like our world, it will be richly diverse. It will be richly diverse. And like the original, some aspects of the series could be seen as metaphors for issues facing us all today. Oh, so everything on television. Um, <laughs> it's a weird description. Um, the producers reportedly intend on hiring an African-American actor to play Buffy. That's not a surprise. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't bother me, but it's also not a surprise. Um, the show will be pitched to cable and streaming networks alike, as it has yet to find a network, but it should have no trouble finding interested parties since Buffy the Vampire Slayer was one of the most beloved and popular shows of its day. Um, I don't know how I feel about this, <laughs> to be honest, because Bu Buffy is one of those shows that it, it works. It, it worked at that point in time. It works for a variety of reasons. Right. The tone was the 90s right um it was the all the actors were just perfect together um and i feel like one thing is okay and this is going to come out wrong at first but when i first <laughs> well, when i first hang in there <laughs> right hang on when i first read that an african-american actress was going to take over the role of buffy there was an eye it roll huh there was an eye roll huh no oh, okay. it just it worries me because it could be one of two things. It could be they get a, an African-American actress and then they just make a show like normal and everything's fine. Or they make it a central focal point of the show that she's black, which is going to make it ridiculous. <laughs> so now that was one thing people were saying about um, Discovery too. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, they're going to make never even comes up obviously because they're in fucking space and there's there's fish people walking around right you know so the, the color of one skin really is irrelevant <laughs> <laughs> but um i i don't i mean hey they they made domino black and they they got that right i think they're starting to get it right now where they're 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 bringing diversity much needed diversity to hollywood but not making a, a caricature of of a of a thing you right. know to get attention you know so we'll see about that um i i am with Whedon on board, okay, because um, I know this is his baby, and he's not going to let people ruin it, right. I would think, but money does a lot of things. Yeah, you know, I mean, it just depends on how much control he has over it. Right. You know, that's going to be the big the big key right there, um, but yeah. Huh. So, Verizon has confirmed that it will no longer activate 3G-only phones on its CDMA network ahead of the 2019 shutdown as the telecom migrates nearly all of its traffic over to its 4G LTE network. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> if oh, you still got a 3G-only phone. I know, right? That's like, what are you doing? What are you actually, doing? Actually, a lot of, the, uh, a lot of the, the flip phones that like older people get. Yeah. But I don't think they're using data. Yeah, they're not. That the only reason you're using that is just you, because you just need something to phone and text. Yeah, um, got that shit in the glove box. Just right, in case shit goes south. Exactly, <laughs> like the phone that uh, that uh, Captain America gave Tony. Right. You know? uh, the news reported earlier by Droid Life is now official. Coming months of coming following months of rumors that this summer would be the cutoff for 3G phones on Verizon. The company statement uh, released a statement to Droid Life outlining the the thought process behind the move. 
for several years, we've been publicly saying that our 3G CDMA network will remain available through the end of 2019. Virtually all traffic on our network is on our 4G LTE to facilitate a move trans a smooth transition to 4G LTE capable products and services. We are no longer allowing devices that are not 4G LTE capable to be activated on our network. Verizon confirmed last year that it plans to shut down the old CDMA network by the end of 2019, but they didn't know exactly when the 3G activation deadline would be. Unfortunately, for those who want to go back in time to a pre-LTE era, you're out of luck, at least with Verizon. I mean, <laughs> stuff like this is going to happen. They yeah, can't, you know. It's kind of like when people want, why doesn't Microsoft support Windows XP anymore? <laughs> Stop it. Yo, man, you know? I've been using Windows 98 SE for like 20 years. Why the hell Who's did a- they stop supporting that? Supporting I'm going to tell you, speaking of Microsoft and this particular issue, we were talking about this earlier. Microsoft's done with everybody's bullshit. Oh, I know. So I they switched Skype. to the new, the new Skype. We're using it. I think it's version 8. Real which clean. Is actually, which is actually sounds better. It, it, yeah, it, you know, like doing this during this call. It sounds clean. It sounds There's clean. There's no ups and downs and yeah. shit. So, and that was the issue: is the old Skype API was very old, and it wasn't it was really shit. working it was with doing shit. It, it really was. So the new one's great. You know, that's all I'm talking about. Episode brought to you by Microsoft. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Our Microsoft overlords have told us to tell you. Um, so let me read the statement here. Uh, right. <laughs> So Microsoft said they come out with this version eight and they go all older versions will stop working in September 1st. Right. Like there was no <laughs> we're going to wait. Right. We'll give you time. They're like, fuck, fuck you, you people. We're done. We did that with XP and you guys kept mm-hmm. whining and whining and whining. Nope. Well, that's like I love it. Like what they're doing with um, Office, the new um, the uh, Office 2018 or 2019 or something like that. No longer working with older versions of Windows. It needs to be on Windows 10. Yeah, you know, in order for you to get that, and they're so it's like, you know, it's like okay, you know, if you want the old one, you can buy the disc, but if you want Windows three hundred and sixty, you need to have Windows ten, which is smart, which is something Apple does all the time, you know, and you know, and people, you know, and people, ha- people deal with it, but it's just you know, Microsoft people just seem to be able to feel like they should be able to be like, nah, I don't want to. Okay, here you go. We'll give you an extra ten years. You know? Right. It's stupid. Yeah. Not to mention just. With all the security issues that we've been having, you know, it's like you need to upgrade your OS and stop being a stop being a bitch about it. Stop being a little bitch, or a, or, or stop being an old person and upgrade. <laughs> Someone was trying to be online. I was on a forum. They're like, Windows Seven is still the best operating system for gaming, and I go, you can't even use the new DirectX in it. <laughs> like, what are you playing? Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I'm playing uh, my original. Uh, my original uh, StarCraft. Right. <laughs> like the I original admit, disc. I will admit, there's things in Windows 10 I don't like. Oh, yeah. But that's the same thing. Even Windows 7 had shit that I didn't like. But there's things in Windows 7 I don't like. When XP I don't like. There's things in Linux I don't like. Windows Everything 8, in Mac Win- I don't like. <laughs> Windows 8 and, and, uh, and uh, Vista don't like, you know? Just <laughs> right. You know? So, it is what it is. Um, All right. So. Is it... Is it my turn? Yeah, 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 it is. It is. Um, <laughs> I, I lost my place for a minute. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, so at Comic-Con, I'm sorry, San Diego Comic-Con. Right. Because, you know, yeah. they get very touchy. Yeah, they get very um, touchy if you don't mention that it's San Diego <laughs> Comic-Con. DC Entertainment announced a hey, new... we just got sued for not saying it was... <laughs> Shit. <laughs> episode hasn't even aired yet. They already... They're right. Already like... How'd they... Wait a minute. How'd they know? <laughs> <laughs> um, DC Entertainment announced a new publishing imprint called DC Black Label. The label will only uh, mark certain stories, um, each created by DC Comics' most prominent writers and artists. Uh, they'll bring edgy and provocative standalone stories to the legends of DC's greatest heroes and villains. For starters, the label is focusing on stories centered around Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Uh, creating DC Black Label doubles down on our commitment to working with all-star talent and trusting them to tell epic, moving stories that o- that only they can tell with the highest levels of creative freedom," said publisher Jim Lee. That was that was like expertly said. <laughs> it was like poetic almost. Um, and freedom those those writers and artists will have. 
series uh, that run under the DC Black Label won't be restricted to a specific format, release schedule, or canon. Um, when it comes to DC Black Label, creative vision is most important. Writers will be free to write stories that contradict the new 52 or Rebirth, and artists can reimagine heroes and villains with designs that have never been seen before. DC Entertainment has six books planned for the first wave of DC Black Label titles. Superman Year One, Batman Last Night on Earth, um, Night Spelled with a K, of course. Of course. Uh, Batman Damned, Wonder Woman Historia the Amazons, Wonder Woman Diana's Daughter, and the other history of the DC Universe. Frank Miller and John Romita Jr. are on Superman Year One, which promises to be a groundbreaking reimagining of Superman's classic origin story. Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo are behind Batman Last Night, a story that brings with Batman waking up in the desert next to the Joker's head, still alive in a jar. <laughs> that just sounds fun. <laughs> like I, I want to see that. Um, Brian Azario, Azario, who I fucking love, um, and Lee Barem. Remio, I think, are tackling Batman Damned, a story where Batman and Constantine team up to chase down a horrific serial killer who might have managed to murder the Joker. Um, Keller Sue Kelly, not Keller, Kelly Sue DeCon- DeConnick and Phil Jimenez are telling a homerific epic of the lost history of the Amazons and we're Wonder talking, Woman. We're not talking Homer epic as in, you know, Simpsons. Simpsons, yeah. No, we're not. We're like, like back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Wonder Woman History of the Amazons, not much is known yet about Wonder Woman Diana's daughter. In fact, that's a working title. But Greg Rucka uh, will be using the comic to tell the story of a young woman who defies the odds of her hopeless world. John Ridley is writing a literary series that analyzes iconic DC moments in the other history of the DC universe. Um, you can catch the full, if you, if you go to our site, the show notes, in, in the article that I'm reading, uh, you can catch the link in the DC Comics blog for the full summary of each book um, as it stands now. I'm really excited for this. I think this is something that's um, just risky enough to be in- exciting. Right. You know, and, and they're having big time fucking talents. Like, I know every name that is attached to these books, you know, which is kind of rare because I suck at remembering names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. So. I'm I'm pretty excited about that Batman last night. I think that's going to be hilarious. Um, anything Brian Azario is in, I'm down with. Um, he's the one who did um, that one shot trade Joker. Oh right, where the dude goes to pick that random thug went yeah. and picked up Joker, and it was this just wild ride. Um, I'm going to be honest, Superman Year One. I mean, I'll probably enjoy it, but I'm not too hyped about it because I've seen Superman's origin retold about seven billion times. Well, but Frank Bill's on it, so. Well, Superman Year One, they already did a Year One. This must be like a third volume or something, because they've done two of them. I don't know. I don't know anything. All I do know is there's two Batman books and two Wonder Woman books, which is not a surprise. Right. So. Trim- Trinity. Right. Um, the other history um, of the DC Universe is cool, but for some reason it reminds me of that movie, um, History of the Universe Part 1. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> and I don't think it's going to be like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. All right. So, we've got here is failure to communicate. No, um. What? <laughs> uh, so, we have the CW is looking to expand its DC comic world. The network is teaming with DC small screen universe mastermind Greg Berlanti to develop Batwoman as a TV series. The character of Batwoman will officially be introduced in December as part of the CW's annual DC series crossover event. Batwoman revolves around Kate Kane, who, armed with the passion for social justice and a flair for speaking her mind, soars into the streets of Gotham as Batwoman, an out lesbian and highly trained street fighter primed to snuff out the falling uh the failing city criminal resurgence city's cr- criminal resurgence but don't call her a hero yet in this in a city desperate for a savior kate must overcome her own demons before embracing the call to gotham's symbol of hope carol uh caroline dries the vampire diaries is attached to pen the script and the executive produce the series which is based on the dc comics character berlanter berlanti and his warner brothers based Berlanti production topper Sarah Schetter 
and Jeff Johns will executive produce the drama. A casting notice for the role of Kate will go out shortly. The DC crossover will mark the first time the, the character of Batwoman will appear in a live act in live action form on any screen where it has been seen fighting alongside the CW heroes. Should Batwoman move to series, it would join the slate of DC series at the CW, which includes Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and Black Lightning. As Berlanti also builds a roster of DC fare on the comic book powerhouse forthcoming DC subscription digital platform. Launching in August, the platform will feature, will feature scripted originals including Titans, Doom Patrol, and more. The script deal brings Dries back to the CW and Warner Brothers TV, for whom she served as showrunner on The Vampire Diaries. Dries exited briefly for an overall deal with Sony TV. Her credits include Melrose Place and Smallville. Somebody say. <laughs> <laughs> Berlanti, meanwhile, is fresh off renewing his overall deal at Warner Brothers TV in the four in a four hundred million four year extension. The deal includes cash incentives that kick in when he hits a specific number of series. Heading into the fall, Berlanti has a record fourteen scripted TV series on the air across six six networks and produces two animated series airing on the seventh. They are the CW's All-American, Arrow, Black Lightning, Legends of Tomorrow, The Flash, Riverdale, and Supergirl, NBC, Blindspot, CBS's God Friended Me, and the Thin, Re the Thin Red Line, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina at Netflix, C uh, DC Universe's Digital Services, Doom, uh, Doom Patrol and Titans, Lifetime's You, and the CW Seed animated series Freedom Fighters, The Way, and Constantine's CD of Demons. So, I fuck her busy. <laughs> it's really what what's happening here. Um, Batwoman is a weird character. Yeah. Like on the in the comics, she's a little strange. Yeah, Batman kicked her off the uh, the Bat Team. Yeah, I actually and... think she's mildly insane. <laughs> like I've read. I'm sure it'll be toned down a little bit for the TV. I've no, I've read a lot of her of her books recently, and. It really, the tone of it feels like a woman who's kind of lost it. Mm. Like she's not all there. Right. You know, uh, she's badass and she's a lesbian, so she's a big deal, you know, right. but um, she's a little nutty. I mm. like it. Not going to lie. <laughs> kind of <You> turns know. on. <laughs> I like them a little nutty. Mm. But uh, yeah. So anyway, mm. enough of my sexual fantasies. Um, <laughs> Marvel Comics legend Stan Lee has made quite a second career for himself as an actor. After appearing as a hot dog vendor in 2000's X-Men film, he's become a regular fixture of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and X-Men franchises of, of movies. Um, he never sticks around very long, but his cameo roles always get a big reaction from audiences. His latest, though, might surprise you. Lee has switched sides, albeit temporary. In Teen Titans Go to the Movies, Stan Lee is a character. If you haven't seen... Um, Oh, yeah, go see the Teen Titans trailer. It's actually good. I don't even like Teen Titans Go, but that trailer was kind of funny, dude. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I might have to take my kids and see that flick because uh, my youngest son likes it. Um, Lee pops up letting everyone know he's there to make his standard superhero movie cameo. And while at first glance you may be wondering which voice actor is approximating the iconic figure, that's the Spider-Man co-creator himself poking fun at his constant appearances in a variety of comic book films. Well, this is only the second time he's made a cameo in an animated film. Shout out to Big Hero 6. It's mm -hmm. his first time appearing in a DC Comics property. If ever there was a film to do it in, though, this would be the one. Teen Titans Go to the Movies is loaded with meta jokes about a variety of other superhero films, poking fun at the MCU, the X-Men, and Deadpool. And it takes a lot of shots at DC Entertainment's own big big screen properties. Yeah, it's supposed to be a big joke. Yeah. Like they're just gonna be making fun of everybody. Um, this is the <laughs> this is a movie that dreams up a trailer for Batman's utility belt getting its own standalone film. Mm -hmm. If ever Lee was going to poke fun at his own penchant for appearing in so many movies, this is where it was meant to to happen. That is managed. That is managed to be in a DC Entertainment film. Is just one more meta layer on top of that movie. So, so I think I think that was pretty cool. I think it's clever. You know yeah. what I mean? But I'm probably gonna see this one in theater. I think I'm gonna take my sons to. I think they, it's kind they, of. I think it's kind yeah. of funny that you know, he, uh, you know, he's on there. You know, doing a cameo in a DC movie. I just think that's kind of funny. Yeah. Like we, he's gotten to that level. Like even, he's just he's Mister Comic Book now. It doesn't right. even matter. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. So like AT&T, Sprint has raised the administrative fee to tack on to the bills of its wireless customers, according to a recent report from the Wall Street Journal. The fee is support, supposedly meant to cover payments to local telephone companies, property tax, and other legal expenses. Sprint, claim, Sprint claims uh, users on Reddit and other forums report seeing the fee increase from $1.99 to $2.50 per month on their bills as early as March of this year. The Verge previously reported that AT&T more than doubled its administrative fees from $0.67 cents to $1.99 per month just a few weeks ago. It's a move that could add $970 million to AT&T's annual revenue, as well as help pay the $85 billion the company spent to acquire Time Warner. Uh, it looks like Sprint did the same, and it managed to avoid public much public outcry AT&T has endured its pa this past month when applied to more than 30 million postpaid wireless lines and uh, that Sprint has on its network, it could spike to lead an additional 200 million in annual revenue for the company, the Wall Street Journal reports. This past April, Sprint agreed to an all-stock merger with T-Mobile with to combine both wireless companies that no word yet on how the price hike may affect the merger. T-Mobile CEO John Leger uh, has long touted that the company's adherence to a no-hidden-fee policy. We also, know, uh, we also don't know how it'll affect the $32 billion of net debt the company is swimming in as, as much of this past March, but charging customers more money for the same service could certainly help. <laughs> Sprint, you know, you know what Sprint should have done for that would benefit everybody in the merger hmm. to just close, just close. Yeah, just just stop. <laughs> just be done with it. Like, don't even give refunds. Just make their phones not work anymore. And then let the other companies like give maybe a promotion like, oh, I've Sprint abandoned you here. Right, right. Yeah, you know, that th that would be the best way out of this. Just saying. Hmm. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm so <laughs> sick of hearing about Sprint be be dumb. <laughs> you know, what are you gonna do? Right. This one is going to be something that only a few people are going to give a fuck about. One of those people is me. So hmm. you're all gonna listen to it while I read it because <laughs> it's half my show. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> James Olin might not be a household name, but if you love video games, you might have played some of the titles he helped create. He became a full-time designer to, to work on the original Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2 back in the 90s. And he has since worked as lead designer and creative director for various projects, including Star Wars The Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic. Now, the industry veteran has announced that he's leaving Bioware after 22 years of working for the company. In fact, he's taking a break from video games altogether to embark on, quote, something smaller and more personal, unquote, a publishing company focused on creating Dungeons & Dragons adventures in particular. Olin said the most fun he's ever had in the industry was working on Baldur's Gate back in the late 90s. Baldur's Gate, for those that don't know, is a Dungeons & Dragons um, property. Uh, he said he's been a D and D fanatic since he was a kid and that it's time to be part of it again. In his tweets, Olin linked to his new project, which describes itself as a quote, a publishing venture formed by a group of passionate veterans from the video game industry end quote for his first book with the new company called Odyssey of the Dragon Lords. He's working with fellow, um, star Wars, um, the old Republic designer, uh, Jesse F sky, while his departure will surely be lost to Bioware, it seems fitting that he's leaving the company for a D&D &D related reason. According to Game Informer, the developers' founders, Ray Muska and Greg um, Zeskuk, those are oddly Russian last names. <laughs> just saying. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, first heard of him because he ran two legendary D&D &D campaigns with lengthy waiting lists. And I actually knew that. Before this article came out. That's how nerdy I am. I love the Baldur's Gate series. I played the shit out of it back in the day. Um, and I, there's a couple tweets here, but I'll just read his main one. He just says, after 22 years, I have retired from Bioware. I've loved my time with Anthem, Star Wars, uh, Dragon Age, and Dungeons and & Dragons. But I need to take a break from the industry and work on something a little smaller and more personal. And then he, he does tweet... Uh, uh, image the player's guide to Odyssey of the Dragon Lord. So it looks like it looks like he's creating a new setting uh, for D and D, um, and that's great. You know, 
we can always use more settings, right. James. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, the reason I put this out is because he's one of those people that you, no one knows who he is, but you have played one of his games. Like, it's, it's some of the greatest RPGs he's attached to. You know, the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, I mean, come on. Right. You know what I mean? Those are amazing games. So, there you go. All right. All right. So, on uh, looks like on that note, we might as well just get into our what the actual fuck. <laughs> All right, so um, my what the actual fuck this week is, finally someone has come to their senses. Uh, Some may wonder why this is on the site. It's because it involves where I live. This could end up being on our what the actual actual fuck list. Uh, Why? Because it's the dumbest idea the state has ever had. Proposition 9 has, may have hit a roadblock. The California Supreme Court today blocked a proposal that would split the state into three uh, three from reaching uh, into three from reaching the November ballot, according to multiple sources. The state's high court said the measure Prop Nine shouldn't be on the ballot because of the sub, quote substantial que- questions raised about its validity. The court issued a brief order to in intervene because the potential harm for permitting the measure to remain on the ballot outweighs any possible damage caused by delaying the measure for a future election. The Planning and Conservation League filed a lawsuit arguing that the proposition amounted to a change in the state's constitution as much that it requires two-thirds vote of both legislative chambers before the matter could be put to voters. Backed by billionaire venture capitalist Tim Draper, Proposition 9 would carve the state into thirds. Northern California encompassing San Francisco and 39 other counties. California sweeping Los Angeles and five adjacent counties. And Southern California including San Diego and all of Riverside, San Bernardino, and all pretty much the uh, conservative midsection of the state. Uh, Drape argued in court papers that the initiative would give voters more say. The court asked Alex Padilla, California's Secretary of State, and Draper to explain to the court by August 20th why the conservation group's request to block the measure shouldn't be granted. Draper will have 30 days to respond. This is a stupid idea. It is a total stupid idea. The reason for this, and this is the big reason, is because because most of the state tends to lean more liberal or democratic. They feel that the third of the state that is conservative doesn't get a say. So what they're essentially trying to do is split it up so then the conservatives can have their own state. Because if you look at it, it's all the most conservative areas in California. But here's the issue, though, and something that concerns, and I understand that. But something the conservatives are not understanding is if you split into three states, you have completely fucked your economy. Right. It's the fourth largest economy on the fucking planet. Right. Like we can't go fucking like that. Not, it is not to mention you're going to lose power in Congress because you're not going oh, in as California. You're going to go in as Southern California, which is going to give you less, you know, less there. Not to mention Congress has to ratify. And we know how that's going to go. You know, mm-hmm. so it's it, this is just it's it's a bullshit proposition. You know, if they were smart, if if you have some conservatives that are really upset, they could just move a, to a different state that's more conservative and probably cheaper to live in. Oh right. You know, that's always an option. Yeah, it's just an saying. Option. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was reading. I read your article because I, I forgot about this, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, they still want to do this. This is so dumb. They've been wanting to do this for a long time. California always wants to do something weird. They want they want to separate from the country. They want to split up into three states. Yeah. Like, Jesus, guys. Can you tell your people to calm down over there, Steve? All right. Hey, Settle I, it down. I'm the one that was like, really, guys? Come on. What the fuck are you doing? You'd be in the blue state, right. which would just simply be called California. California. Yeah. Because anytime someone thinks about California, they're thinking about that blue section. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't thinking about anything else. Right. Um, you know, whatever. So this is gross and kind of funny. Did you hear about the sealed sarcophagus? Uh, they opened in Egypt only to find three skeletons stewing in putrid rust-colored soup. Ew. Did you per- what? Ew. Yeah. Did you perhaps wonder what it would be like to taste that very same soup? To put a cup in this long marinated bone broth to your lips and <laughs> hail its succulent essence 
and draw a long sip. You are not alone <laughs> if you did. A change.org user going by the name Inz Mick without the I, it's almost racist. I'm just going to say, <laughs> uh, created a petition in the name of this total sacrilege. <laughs> and as of Saturday afternoon, it's gathered more than 8,000 signatures. Of course it has <laughs> from petitioners who wish to sample the forbidden nectar that's quoted or quote, yeah, whatever. <laughs> forbidden nectar. <laughs> <laughs> quote, we need to drink the red liquid from the cursed dark sarcophagus in the form of some sort of carbonated energy drink so we can assume its powers and finally die. <laughs> the petition reads. So obviously it's a joke, but right. still. Um, to be clear, the liquid is actually sewage water that leaked in over the centuries. Um, the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities said this week, uh, which is why the mummies were found decomposed instead of reserved. So basically, the the ancients <laughs> fucked up. They right. didn't they put it away well. Um, Innsmick uh, has indeed heard this line and would like people to please stop trying to tell me the skeleton juice is mostly sewage. That's impossible. Everyone knows skeletons can't poop. That's a quote. <laughs> so he's just having a bit of fun with it. Right. Um, despite the large size of the sarcophagus, the bodies inside are not believed to be royalty as hoped. Um, and reg- why would you hope that? And re- that's probably why it was half-assed put in there. Um, and regardless of where their accompanying liquid came from, sewers, an Egyptian <laughs> news out- outlet posted a video to YouTube appearing to show a man dumping containers of the repulsive slurry right smack onto the street. Um, so unfortunately, it looks like our chance to obtain immortality and or a mummy's curse. So basically, <laughs> this is what happened. And this is this is Egypt, okay? The current Egypt. They find the sarcophagus with three dead people in it, okay? The remains of dead people in it. And there's this liquid in it that's gross. It's super, they're just dumping it into the street. There's two things wrong with this. One, <laughs> someone's going to die. Right. Someone's going to fall down in the street and they're going to die. And two, are, are we are we just not respecting the remains of the dead anymore? Like, we just don't give a fuck? We don't give a fuck about anything out here. Come on mm-hmm. now. You know, like, Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's how you get the plague sent on you. I'm just saying. You're in Egypt. Don't be fucking around. <laughs> 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 no, but... um. It's so great. Like when I first I was like, oh, and then I was reading. I was like, this motherfucker over here, he got jokes. <laughs> so they have a picture though. If you on the follow our show notes on the website, um, and and there's just bones that like, you see a jaw, like a lower jaw, just broken off. They're just <laughs> swimming in this water, <laughs> you know. And it's it's um, it looks really gross. <laughs> so <laughs> what they should do, uh-huh. I'm just saying. They should collect all of the bones and go bury them somewhere. Or what they really should do is bury them in the way that they would have been buried when they were buried. If you want to be respectful, you know, you don't get bad juju put on you. (laughs) Just saying. Bad juju. That phrase always cracks me up. Bad juju. Bad juju. Yeah. It sounds racist, doesn't it? It does. Like, it, it really it does. It sounds like you're really be like you stop for a second, like bad what? Yeah, you're like <laughs> you're yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like that's bad. Wait, wait, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> we're saying that. We're saying that. Right. <laughs> that's we've, a thing. We've committed to this, right? That's like, a that, thing we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like wait, we've committed to this word. Like this is what we're saying now, right? <laughs> right. I do want to say, and I'm um real quick. I'm gonna add to the end of this podcast. Before we started recording this podcast, Steve and I were speaking about um, how pretty much every web browser is letting us down. <laughs> they they all suck right now. Right. Um, and I downloaded the Brave browser, and I was like, "Okay, cool. I'm gonna use this for the for the uh, the podcast." He was inspired you know? by the Disney movie. I was. <laughs> um, that's also racist. A lot of racism <laughs> getting thrown around. Um, I'm even more offended because they're Scottish and you just put that on me and that doesn't, you know, whatever. Um, See, that, the, would, that would bother me if I gave a fuck, but right, I exactly. really don't, so. Um, so anyway, <laughs> the Brave browser crashed about four times. So <laughs> in, in, the cor- in the course of the beginning, that was in the beginning of the recording. So I said, fuck this. And I downloaded um, Opera and I've been using Opera the entire time and it has worked flawlessly. So I am going to do 
my very famous <laughs> browser switch week long tests <laughs> of a particular software, and I will use nothing but Aqua, including the mobile version. Oh. And I'm going to see how it how it works. I do dig. I dig the little sidebar. I forgot yeah. how cool it was. I think um, I, I think I tried Opera on mobile, but it it was the pop up blocker that I went back to Firefox. Firefox. Yeah. On, Firefox on mobile is actually pretty good. The only thing that bugs me is like I like to have the mobile one because it syncs. Yeah. You know what I mean. So like especially with um with opera opera has a thing now and i was looking at it what's it called oh, where is it where is it where is that where is that where is uh, it? Uh. my flow it's called my flow so if you connect your phone to it uh it says connect opera with your phone to send stuff between your device using my flow so you can send like images links everything and it's just seamlessly between the two so we'll we'll see nice we'll see all right We'll, we'll update you next week. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. So that is it for this week. Thank you for checking us out this week. If you're listening to us on iTunes or Stitcher, please go ahead and leave us some reviews. Leave us those five-star reviews on iTunes or go to Stitcher and just comment on the show. It helps us out immensely. Sorry. I was reading something. <sighs> I apologize. What do you, you want like from me? work with professionals one day, you know? Too fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us on all that social media shit. Twitter and Instagram, both under the name The Lazy Geeks. It's all one word. Don't forget to follow our Facebook and Google Plus pages. Any feedback you want to give that you can't give for some reason through those sites, you definitely email us, thegeeks at thelazygeeks.com. And you can find me on the interwebs on Twitter, at a middle-aged geek, Instagram, middle-aged underscore a geek. I am also on Twitter and Instagram, both under at sapientlg. And you can email me, adam at thelazygeeks.com. And, uh, yeah, so thank us for this. Uh, thanks for listening for this longest episode that we've done since we changed the format. An hour and, like, less than an hour and 25. Mm -hmm. Like, we're 15 minutes longer than normal. So, you know, the supersized episode, which would have normally ran us, what, two hours? Right. <laughs> uh, so that is it for us this week. So until next time, peace out. Peace out.